I'm joined today with uh, our warehouse manager, Carlos Moran, and Jordan Placencia is the education coordinator with RQS, and these are the guys that will be doing the demonstration. So, Tanya, are you set? Can you see everything that um, we're looking at? Let me get back. Uh, let me get to the, as I uh, guided everybody to do with the active speaker view, let me do that so that we can make sure. Um, let me stop sharing my screen and then that will help. Yes, yes. I can see y'all fully on my screen. Going through here and kind of getting a nod of heads. Is everybody good? Can you see? Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. We're looking at Jordan Placentia, and we've got two different devices today that Jordan's going to go over the cough assist device and the suction. So we're going to look at the suction device and the cough assist device. They generally go together. So we'll be covering them both. And today Jordan's going to be talking to you as if he was doing instructions to a patient. So this is nothing terribly technical and nothing beyond anyone's abilities. And our virtual patient today is, is Carlos and Carlos is going to, let you see what it feels like to be on the other end, the operational end of a cough assist device. And after we do the talk and demonstration, then I'm going to fill in some gaps and tell you why we're doing it, why we think the device is incredibly important for anyone that's got, um, you know, this type of uh, problem with uh, ALS. So I'm going to pass it on to Jordan and uh, take it away, Jordan. All right. Well, again, my name is Jordan. And um, I've been an RT for about six years, a little bit of background on me. I worked at Memorial Hermann and uh, Methodist. And about three years ago, I joined RQS. So here you have me now. And um, some of you might have seen me in the past at your home, or maybe not. Well, um, enough about me. So like Dr. Holt said, um, we're going to learn about a hypothesis today. And then, uh, or a little review for you, some of you. And then um, a suction device. Um, the reason why you might get this prescribed is for um, clear, um, since you have secretions or are having problems with saliva, um, then the doctors have prescribed this to you based on some studies that you might have had in the past, which is um, when you have to take a deep, deep breath in and then exhale forcefully and we get those numbers and depending on those numbers as I get qualified on. Um, with that said, if the doctor sees any of you to get this device, that's when you get this device prescribed. And again, it's for error um, clearance, you know, any mucus, saliva, and so on. Um, another reason why you might get this order is to prevent um, lung collapse, um, meaning that you're not getting enough air into your lungs. So with that said, this helps with um, lung recruitment, because um, if you think about it, your lungs are um, like balloons. So this, if um, with this disease, you lose the ability to expand your lungs fully. So with that said, this device is gonna help you um, expand your lungs all the way. And by doing so, it's gonna help you recruit all those little balloons, I call it little balloons, um, to make it more simple for you, uh, to help you get all the volume in your lungs that you need. And with that, it's gonna help you excel any mucus or secretions or saliva that might go in the wrong way. Um, into your lungs. So that's what this device is for. And of course, the suction will be to get rid of all those secretions, all the, the mucus that you're unable to um, um, get out on your own. You know, I have some patients that even use this uh, while they're, what's it called, uh, brushing their teeth because they're, they don't have the um, ability anymore to get rid of the, of the excess water or to spit the, you know, the, the left out water from when you brush your teeth. <clears throat> um, anyways, going back to this device, this is our cough assist. It's uh, made by Respironics. Um, here's your on and off switch. Here's a toggle that you can use manually, and normally our patients don't use that since we uh, man, um, have everything start automatically for them. Uh, this will be the buttons that you, um, the patient or the caregiver is going to use. Um, to navigate the, the device. Um, as you can see, this is not touch screen. So um, if for any reason you try to tap because it looks like it's touch screen when your one is on, you won't be able to. So um, you won't be able to change any parameters like that. On this side, you have, um, I will say the exhalation um, port or um, 
where it's going to blow up air that's going to go into your lungs. Um, and also it's going to create a vacuum. Um, and I explain to you more in, in detail in, <clears throat> when we move on. Um, and that's going to, the vacuum is going to help you get rid of the secretions. Um, there's a filter that goes with it, and this is a bacterial filter. This filter is to prevent any particles to vent your lungs that not need to be in your lungs. So we like to protect your lungs with that. So this is your uh, bacterial filter. Um, and all this, by the way, comes in a bag all together for you <clears throat> at the time of setup. And the therapist that sets you up is going to do this in front of you, just like I am right now. Um, this tubing will um, attach right here. It's a little hard to do so. so. About half an inch to a quarter of an inch is fine. As you can see, it's pretty steady. It won't come out. So, as of course, as you keep on taking it off and putting it back on after cleaning on the tubing, it's going to go in some more. So, But for now, it's pretty good, steady right there. <clears throat> okay. Um, the device comes with this little piece right here. This is what's going to help you attach the mask uh, to the tubing. Um, it's very important that you don't lose these because if not, you won't be able to attach the mask to it and then um, you will want to do your therapy. So we attach it like this and then the mask will go right here. Okay. So <clears throat> one more thing that I forgot to mention, I'm gonna turn this uh, around. Here's where the machine will uh, plug in right here. And then you have this filter. This filter is to um, filter anything that, that's big, like uh, pet hair, um, dust, any particles. And you are also able to take this filter out and wash it. We recommend to at least wash it once a week or check it once a week, make sure it's not turning on white because when that's happening, when that happens, that means there's dust in there. You don't want that dust, you're not to get into the device and then eventually um, might cause some malfunctions. So anyway, so um, clean it once a week with warm soapy water, that'll be fine. And put it back in. That's how that goes. Don't worry about these other attachments right here. The only thing you need to worry about is this one right here. So if you feel um, why are these for, this is just for um, hospital use. <clears throat> um, on this slot right here that you see, there is an SD card that goes to it, and that's for us to use it as, as um, a way to see your data, see how this, um, if the settings that we have you on are helping you um, clear your secretions, or if we need to do some settings adjustment, either increase or decrease the pressures, so it can also make it more comfortable to you. Um, so there's an SD card that goes here, and then at, at this moment we don't have one, but um, um, if the doctor or ourselves would like to view your, your data, we will insert one in, copy the data, and then um, just remove it. Okay. <coughs> um, so now I'm going to turn it on. Okay, I already have a, um, some settings preset over here. Um, with that said, we normally in RQS, we like to set three settings on this device. Um, preset number one is the one that you, that's going to help you with the cough. Um, Person number two is another setting that we have, and we call it like a rescue mode, and that's um, it does the same fun function as a cough assist. As person number one, I'm sorry, but it just has higher pressures. So in case um, your person number one is not um, helping you get rid of any secretions that you might have in the back of your throat, person number two with um, two with um, higher pressures. It's um, gonna help you get rid of all of that. And that, um, it could be like you feel you have mucus stuck in the back, or maybe you drink some water, or you feel like it's sitting in the back of your throat, or you ate something. Um, and again, your person number one is not helping you. You can always move to person number two. And um, it gives, uh, gives good results. Um, the, there's another preset, which is preset three. And that was, um, we decided to come up with a preset is called long sleep deep maneuver or technique. And that was, uh, 
I'm another doctor that was here, uh, Dr. John Nussenstein. Um, he did some research and realized that breast stacking, yes, it was good, but not for ILS population. So with that said, um, <clears throat> these maneuvers, you're gonna inhale your breath slowly, let the machine give you that breath for, it can be from three and a half to four seconds. And what that does is gonna re-expand your lungs because we want to re-expand your lungs after you use the cough assist portion of this therapy. Um, just in case there, again, there's any lung collapse or so, since we're creating positive and negative pressure on preset one. Um, in preset two, we're only gonna, I'm sorry, three, we're only gonna create a positive pressure to re-expand your lungs. And, um, <clears throat> And then we're gonna go into that once we have Carlos um, do the therapy. Anything that I'm forgetting, just let me know. <laughs> okay. Uh, with that said, like I was mentioning before, this is um, how your screen is going to look. Um, this side is for inhale, so this side is blue. Inhale, blue, exhale, yellow. Okay, I already have, like I said before, preset pressures. Um, and then the inhalation time for this um, therapy is going to be 1.8 seconds. I'm sorry, inhalation time 1.8 seconds and exhalation time 1.8 seconds. Um, I want Dr. Um, as you can see, it's gonna, this is on standby right now. For you to start the therapy, you want to uh, press this button right here and it will start your therapy. A uh, good way to know whether the therapy is on or not. You can also tell it by sound. Um, you might not be able to tell the difference right now on video, but when you are um, at home with the therapist, you will. And so right now you, you hear sound. And when I press this, the sound is going to increase. But also, you don't see standby here anymore. You see a little line. That means the, this, um, the, the therapy is about to start. Okay. Um, so for now, I'm going to put in standby for a moment. Okay. Um, I want Dr. Hall to focus right here. How you know which um, preset you're in? I don't know why they, um, it was made so small, but you can see the little number one right here. Okay. That's number uh, preset one. If, let's say when I, um, with my patient right here, I was to use this device and he tells me, you know what, I feel like I still have something in my throat, I will click over here on settings, okay? And then I will switch my settings by clicking on modify, okay? By clicking on modify, I will go from setting one to setting two, and I will click okay, and then I will click finish. That will take me to setting two, as you can see this little corner. That's how you will know you're in setting two, but also, I don't know if you were um, paying a little bit of attention or taking some notes, but my first pressure was negative 30 and positive 30. Now we're at positive 35 and negative 35. So that's, um, that'll be a typical setting that you will see um, to help you have more support if preset one is not helping you. So now I'm gonna move to preset number three. So I'm gonna click on settings. I click on modify. And then I'm, when I'm going to preset number three, I'm accept it. I click finish. As you can see, we're only going to have positive pressure on this one. Okay. Um, the positive pressure, we like to um, keep it a little higher than our settings. Just again, it's to reinflate our lungs. <clears throat> okay. So I have it on positive 40 which I am gonna have to turn down for Carlos. And then um, also the inhalation time frame is gonna be 3.5 seconds. Um, how do we gauge that? Uh, a little bit by height and then the taller that our patient is, um, the little higher um, inhalation time that we go. And the shorter they are, a little lower we go, but we don't like to go anything below 3.0 because then it's not therapeutic anymore. As far as exhalation time or pressure, we don't have anything. And that's just normal because again, all we want to do is recruit the lungs, reinflate the, um, I'm gonna 
the, the little alveoli, the balloons are at the base of your lungs that might have collapsed during the first therapy. Not that they do, but just in case to prevent that from happening. Okay, so now I'm gonna click on settings one more time. And then modify, and go down, press okay, and finish. Now I'm gonna pause right now to, um, to see if y'all have any comments, if to let me know if I'm moving fast or any questions before we move into Carlos. They're okay. They're okay? Okay, good. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So I'm gonna turn around real quick, okay? Okay, so now we're going to go to prison number one. Okay, to finish. And now we're gonna start therapy with Carlos. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I'm gonna do again, I'm gonna have to hit therapy. Okay. But before we start, I wanna show you uh, a mass technique that um, I like to, to use. Um, because some of our patients, as you know, ALS, um, it's a degenerative disease uh, of the muscle. So a lot of our patients that get this therapy are the ones that are, have the bulbar onset of the disease, meaning that all of these weakens. Um, that includes other jaw muscles, or pharynx. <clears throat> so if we create too much pressure over here, it's going to collapse their airway. If we create too much pressure here, um, then you're gonna have too much, too much leaks over here. So what I like to do when I do this therapy, I like to place a mask, starting at the nose, and then I'm gonna turn Carlos this way. I like to place my hand on the back of the head, and then I don't, again, I don't put too much pressure here or too much pressure here. I try to keep the pressure even by applying the pressure on the cheek, on the cheekbones. So that will give um, an even pressure. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna um, connect this device. I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna click on if you wanna, I'm gonna click on therapy right here. Okay. Then I'm gonna ask Carlos to take a deep breath in, and then I'm gonna ask him to cough, okay? So I'm gonna place my hand here. All right, Carlos, deep breath in. Cough. <laughs> Do it again. Mm -hmm. So, I'm gonna do it one more time and I want you to pay attention uh, right here. It's gonna be a half moon that's going to appear. Okay, deep breath in, cough. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if y'all were able to see, but the blue part is gonna be inhale and the half pie is going to um, start receding until it disappears and then it turns yellow. Once it turns yellow, it means that this vacuum part of the therapy has started. That's why I'm asking Carlos to cough. So I'm gonna do it one more time so you can pay attention. Okay. You are Carlos. Deep breath in. Cough. Okay. All right. And this is where our suction device will come in play. If there's, um, because some patients, they cannot control their saliva. The, so that's where the suction will come in place. I will turn on the suction device. I will place it on um, behind their molars and try to suction as much as, as, much as I could. Or um, kind of like if they were at the dentist, okay? That's why, like Dr. Holes was putting at the beginning, these both machines come together when you um, they get prescribed. And how many times should they do this? Okay, so the cough assist part, the one we just did, and that's kind of why I paused it, because I didn't want to confuse you. So um, the cough assist part, we do 15 times, and we break it in three sets of five. Um, again, some patients like to do the 15 in a row, 
Some like to take um, breaks in between, and that's why we broke it down in three sets of five. Meaning that one cycle is breath in and cough, that's one, that's one cycle. Then you do four more times, you stop for a minute or so, and you start the other five. And then once you reach 15, take another, uh, we'll say another minute break, and then we will move into preset number three, which is for the long, long, long recruitment. <clears throat> With that said, I'm gonna turn the device one more time so I can show you how the therapy looks like. <clears throat> so to do that, again, I'm gonna go to my settings, options, I'm gonna modify, I'm gonna click up, so I can go up to preset three, press okay, and then finish. All right, now I'm gonna start the therapy. And this, on this therapy, you're only going to um, ask, you're only gonna hear me asking Carlos to just inhale, not to cough. And that's gonna be uh, part of the therapy because he needs to do this for three and a half seconds. So I'm gonna click on therapy. Thing. Once it stop, I just remove the mask. And that's, that's one breath. And then wait a couple of uh, seconds. And then let's do it again. All right, Carlos, one more time. Two breath in. Once it finished, just remove. Okay. And what that is doing again is recruiting probably gonna guitar me here uh, repeating myself but um, I like to always emphasize this that this is um, both um, present number three is for long recruiting um, now you might ask yourself because I have these questions in the, at the home well I don't cough at all I don't um, I don't I don't choke at all why do I need this device and then I go back at it again it was prescribed to you do you, because some some values that we saw in this test that you did at clinic or somebody went to your home and did it for you. Um, yes, you might not feel the need of it right now, but if you use it um, as, a, as a therapy, and which we recommend three times a day before every meal, um, and the reason why you don't wanna do it is when you have a stomach full, because just in case you swallow air, it might make you nauseous, and we don't want that. You know, we want this to be a comfortable experience, not something scary for you. Um, now, let's say you do forget um, to do it, and you're one of those persons that, you know what, I like to do this every morning, I eat, wait an hour or so, and then you can do your therapy, okay? But again, even if you think that you don't need it, trust me, it's gonna, it's, as long as you're doing it as, as a workout or like a therapy, when it comes at night, the time that you do need it, you know how to use the device. Because we have gotten some calls from some caregivers from some of, uh, or for some of the patient's loved ones, like, you know what, my, my so-and-so is choking, I don't know what to do. Well, let's get on the coffices. I don't know how to use the coffices. Then we'll have to get on FaceTime. And it's just something that's really life-threatening. We're like, you know what, hang up with us, call 911. We don't want it to get to that point. So with that said, when you do get this prescribed to you, even if you don't think that you need it, please use it at least, you know, twice a day. If you don't want to do it three times a day, but we really um, encourage you to use this as much as possible, just so you know how it's used. Uh, because again, practice makes perfection. So the more you use it, the more you're gonna, um, <clears throat> gonna know how to use it when the time comes that you really do need it. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so that was basically uh, our coffices part. Um, <clears throat> poor Carlos, I don't wanna go through the whole <laughs> 15 cycles. <laughs> um, but anyway, so, before I move into the suction, are you still good on this device? Jordan, we do have a couple of questions, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think you answered them, but I did want to go ahead and bring them up. Should you do cough assist once a day or twice? And I believe you answered that mm -hmm. uh, just a minute ago. And the other question that we had was how long after eating should I wait to use the cough assist? And, and I think you covered that one as well, but did you want mm -hmm. to add anything on that? I'm like, again, you know, I'll say, um, 
an hour to a couple of hours will be fine. Of course, if you feel like you have a big, big full belly, then I would just skip that session and just wait till noon or, you know, to, to whichever session you're, let's say it was in the morning, then just wait till noon, you know, until you're not feeling like you're fully bloated with food. Because again, um, if for any reason they, you will swallow air, then it could make you nauseous and we don't want that. Perfect. And do we rent or buy the machine? Is a doctor prescription needed? Yes, a doctor prescription is needed. Now, there are some insurances that do buy the machine right off, off hand. There are some other insurances that they do a, a basically a 13 month rental, meaning that they, um, it's rented for 13 months or paying. And they, while they're doing that, they want to see some compliance. So if you're not using your device, they will not pay for your device and they will ask of us, of course, you know, to, to return to us. Um, but with that said, let's say if you want those patients that are very compliant after 13 months, you own the device. And that goes for this and it goes for the um, suction device. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Are the presets different for each person, i.e. Mm -hmm. cough assist, therapy, inflation? Yes, they are. Um, because just because a patient has been diagnosed with ALS, that doesn't mean that they didn't have any other diseases like COPD or asthma. And those are um, some patients that we really look at because they can, their lungs are not able to handle high pressures. So we like to keep the pressures below than another patient will have. Like for example, um, some more COPD patients or asthma patients, we don't go above um, 30 um, and that's pushing it. Uh, we normally like to keep it on 25 for the pressure. A patient that doesn't have any underlying lung condition, then we can go a little higher, as, as high as 45 under pressure. Now, with that said, that's for the positive pressure. Um, for a bulbar patient, um, since this is, their airway is already compromised, um, through research, Dr. Um, John was able to find out that, um, for example, let's say I had a positive pressure of 40, and then I start up a negative pressure of 40, that will not work for them because um, since their airway is already sensitive, the negative pressure would um, collapse their airway. So we, by research, we started from the bottom up. So negative 40, I'm sorry, positive 40, and then we'll go by negative five and start moving up slowly until we see adequate, um, what we call it, peak club peak cough flow, so a, a measurement that we like to see. And a measuring, um, we can read it off the, off the machine and it's anything above 260 um, <clears throat> for our patients. Okay, very mm -hmm. helpful, thank you. The last comment we had before I know you move on um, uh, is uh, someone, Jack, wanted clarification. He said three sets of five before each meal. Did I understand that correctly? Yes. 45 mm -hmm. reps per day total? And yes. what are the reps for mode three? For mode three, you can do five or you can do more. So for mode three, be, um, if you're doing it three times a day, it'd be 15. If you do it you know, once a day, it'd be five. Because mm -hmm. um, so just basically a set of five. So a set of fifth, um, 15 repetitions of preset one in the morning and five repetitions of preset three in the morning. And then, then you know, so again, 45 for preset one and 15 for preset two. Okay, thank you so much, Jordan. That's all we have in the chat box right now. All right, good, good. Okay, so I'm in the mood to a little bit, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So this is our suction device. Um, what I always like to start, um, do your job telling my patients, don't let this little device fool you because this is the largest device you're ever gonna have from us, okay? It, the little pump makes uh, uh, some noise, but um, it's pretty helpful to help you um, keep your airway clear. Okay, so when uh, we arrive to the home, we normally already have it set up like this, okay? This being the one, this is what's gonna go into your mouth. Um, if you can see, the tubing is connected to the, to the chamber, or to the canister. <clears throat> um, and then there's this little tubing right here that's connected from the machine to a filter. And as you can see, I'm gonna flip this over. This little filter says do not wash, okay? That is very important that this filter doesn't get wet. And I'm gonna explain to you why in a second. 
<laughs> the reason why is because um, I'm going to remove this real quick. The reason why is because this filter prevents the machine from getting any fluid in. So as a protective mechanism, um, the machine has this little plastic. I mean, I'm sorry, the canister has this little plastic, which prevents water from going in. Let's say um, for some reason, you the in the water or fluid gets in high enough and it's able to make it there. Uh, I'm gonna remove this for you. There's a little ball right here. Okay, so this little ball floats, okay? Once it floats, it's going to prevent um, or help prevent wire from going into the filter or into the machine. Let's say that fell through because <clears throat> it had nothing to do while it was standing up, but there, for some reason, no accidents do happen. The machine falls, water is going to get in it. Or well, if that happens, then there's a little filter in here. This filter expands. Once it expands, it's not going to let anything go uh, through it. So let's say for some reason you were, you drop your machine and that happened to you, and then you put everything back together and you wanted to use a device, the machine will not work. Not because this is not working, it's because there's an occlusion here. So with that said, if for, any, uh, for some reason it does fall, uh, and there is fluid or water in it, um, or secretions, uh, I always ask, you know, because I get those calls, my machine is not working, we'll remove the filter. So if you see that it's shiny, that means it's wet. We ask you, you know, remove the filter. There is an extra one in your bag. Um, I already used that in the past. Then we say, no worries, you know, you do have extra canisters. Just remove one of those filters from the canister and then you'll be good to go, okay? And then it should work after that. Let's say it's, um, <clears throat> the issue is not the filter. Then we ask you to look at other things because sometimes, um, Secretions can get up plugged in here. So we ask you to look at the tube in here or at the other end or in the end over here. So um, they said everything is clear. You don't know what's going on. Then then we'll say, you know what? Well, turn on the machine for me. So now I'm gonna turn on the machine for you. Turn the machine on. I always ask you to place your finger here. If you're getting suction in here, there might, there might be one more thing that happened. Remember, I was um, talking about the machine falling, right? Um, it's amazing how nature works. Pressure is pressure. If for any reason you have a hairline crack on your canister, it's not going to hold pressure. So that might be one more thing. So sometimes we just ask you to replace the whole thing, and that tends to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one more thing that um, I forgot to mention. Um, <clears throat> this machine, it is battery operated. Okay, so I'm gonna remove from the plug right now. When I plug it in, you see the light. Usually when it's fully charged, you're only gonna see the green light. Okay, uh, right now it's charging, and L3 means that it's, the battery is not charged. So I'm removing this right now. <clears throat> I'm sorry if I'm moving out of order. Um, so anyway, so with that said, it's battery operated. So as you know, just like your phone or any battery operated device, if it's, if it's not fully charged, it's not gonna perform at its best. Um, this machine takes about 17 hours to charge from the, the battery being depleted. So we always like to ask our patients to keep it plugged in at all times, just like if it was yeah, your alarm clock or something. Uh, <clears throat> so it, it's always charged for you. Because again, if it's not charged all the way, you, it's not gonna suction, you know, like it's meant to suction. <clears throat> now, I want you to see right here, this is your on and off switch. This is where um, your power source plugs into, okay? And normally you don't have to worry about this. I only had a couple of patients since I've been working here. <clears throat> that they asked me what this was about. <coughs> um, so this right here regulates your pressure, okay? 
Um, and I want you to see something. It looks like it's broken, but it's not. That's how it's made as safety um, design. So normally you don't have to touch this, but for any reason or accident, you do move it. <clears throat> it gives you a little narrow right here to the, if you twist it to the left, it's going to decrease the pressure. <clears throat> if you go clockwise, it's going to increase your pressure. And we normally like to set it all the way until we can turn it anymore, because that gives you some good pressure for it to suction. <clears throat> Okay, so now I'm gonna place this back in here. So my canister is gonna go here. Then my filter is going to go here. And then the tubing is gonna go here. So this is how it should be set up, okay? Then the tubing will go here. And I'm gonna plug it in for y'all. And this is how it looks. Okay. Now I'm gonna demonstrate because I do get some questions. How do I clean this? How often should I clean this? I'll say it all depends. <clears throat> some family members like to do it after every use. Some once once um, every day. Some in the morning. Some in the evening. Um, they. They wash these canisters with warm soapy water. And another question that I get, well, how do I clean this tubing right here? <clears throat> um, you just turn on the device, like if you were gonna suction. And, uh, right here. Oh, it has to be submerged for a couple of seconds. We'll do it three times. Oops. Let me say they didn't snap it all the way. Uh, it one more time. And then you just turn on the device. So if you didn't hear me, the loud noise was because I did not seal the the, the cap all the way. <clears throat> so that will take care of cleaning in the wand and cleaning in the tubing. Once you do that, then you can always suction just clean water just to rinse it in. And um, and that's it for that. <clears throat> okay. Oh. Jordan, we have a couple of questions. Um, if we're at a, a little pause, yes. what causes the ball to stick at the top periodically? Well, that's just the. Uh, let me remove this real quick. The canister. So. Sorry. Let's call this room. Little former area because it was soap that I had in there. <clears throat> All right. So as you can see, this little piece drop. It that tends to happen every now and then. It does normal. Um, but anyways, <clears throat> what tends to happen is let's say um the the water secretions or fluid arises all the way to the top and it makes it through this little barrier, then that's what's gonna make the, the little ball rise up. So with that said, we'd always advise not to let um, the canister get more than halfway full. If you see more than halfway full, just empty that because we want to prevent that from happening. <clears throat> Thank you. That's and how long, uh, yes, how long does it <clears throat> usually take from the time your doctor prescribes it and that you receive the equipment? Um, it all depends on scheduling. Um, sometimes it can take uh, 24 hours, sometimes it can take 12 hours. It all depends on the scheduling. Like, for example, it has to go through billing and through insurance, get approved, and then we'll contact the patient and work with their time. <clears throat> so it all it depends. It can be, again, 12 hours to 24 hours or so. Sometimes it'll be longer depending on on insurance. We have up uh, sometimes up to seven days maybe, just because we're in approval. Thank you. And what uh, solution is used to clean the wand? Um, I will say um, you can use soapy water or like I recommend is Listerine. My wash, add my wash, half um, water, uh, shake it pretty good and use that as your solution. 
because remember that's going into your mouth so you don't want any bleach or anything like that going into it so i'll say listerine uh, mouthwash will be fine <clears throat> Okay, one, we'll take one more comment. I know you wanted to move on. This uh -huh. is still related to the ball uh, mm -hmm. at the top, getting stuck at the top. Uh, and the comment continues to say that the canister is not full, but the ball will still stick at the top. It will drop when turned off, but may quickly stick at the top again. Oh, no, 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 the, the ball will not stick at the top. That was only, I'm um, using that as a demonstration in case if it will fall, in case, um, it will. Be, it might be sticky. It might be sticky. It might be full. To it clean the ball, clean the sidewalls, you know, the, where the ball sits, it might be sticky and and, and hang up there. Mm -hmm. That would, I mean, warm soapy water would clear that. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And sometimes also um, once a week, you know, you can do uh, um, with vinegar. 50 vinegar, 50 water. Just let it sit there to clean any deposits that might build. You know, on the, just remove the filter. And then, of course, remove everything. And then just have this, the sit by itself inside of have vinegar, have water solution. So remove any, any build that might be happening in there. Okay. <laughs> and your insurance um, normally covers um, one of these a month. So just to keep that in mind. That's why we emphasize cleaning. I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, is this dishwasher, dishwasher compatible? Can you put the whole unit disassembled into the dishwasher and um, wash it? No, no because uh, the way the plastic is made is not um, able to withstand that kind of um, high levels of heat. You might okay. work. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is a, a suggestion. Uh, someone asked how long it would take to get one once it was mm -hmm. prescribed. My pulmonologist ordered one in advance. He said he wanted me to have it when I needed it and not uh, wait until I need it and then try to go through the process of getting it. So he prescribed one oh, several months ago, even mm -hmm. though I've never used it, but it's on standby. Uh -huh. So. I'm just saying that if uh, whoever's listening or is in on this meeting uh, can get your uh, doctor to go ahead and order one, then, then that won't be a problem when you need it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, Jordan, we don't have anything else in the chat box now. If you do have questions or comments, please enter them in the chat box and we'll make sure that we get those addressed and um, I'll let Dr. Holt speak. Hey everyone, just to, to wrap up, to remind you guys, like we were all sort of talking about it. It's, it's important to get these two devices early. You don't wanna learn how to use them when you really need them. That's not the time to learn how everything is. You should know why you're using it. We're trying to prevent pneumonia. So this is about bronchial hygiene. If you have ALS and your lungs become unhealthy, that is a, a very, very bad thing to happen. So this is helping to remove secretions that could can stagnate inside the lungs and could lead to pneumonia and some of the, the lungs starting to settle in on themselves, causing a condition called atelectasis. So when they order it, get it, practice, learn how to use it, become very familiar with the cough assist device and the suction. And if you have a suction, Remember to keep it plugged in. You want to have it charged. You want to make sure that when it's um, when you turn it on, there's a green light that you can, you know, the battery's fully charged if you need it to be portable. Now the cough assist device has space for a battery, but one battery does not come with a cough assist device. So you can purchase another battery if you'd like, but it's it's to be plugged in and used uh, where you are with a stationary ventilator if necessary. But remember. Use these things, practice using these things. Don't wait until you need it because it won't be easy to do. But it's very important to use it like uh, the doctor prescribes and like your respiratory therapist wants to train you. Now keep in mind, this is the way RQS does things. It's not the way every dur durable medical equipment company will show patients. Uh, they may not show everyone the same things, but these are 
the protocols that we've developed over time with experience and uh, reading through the literature. So I just want to make sure that everybody stays on top of things uh, on their own health. Keep in touch with your respiratory therapist and with RQS and the ALS Association as always. So uh, I hope everybody's doing well and I'll turn it back over to you, Tanya. Thank thing. you, Dr. Holt. We do have, uh, there's another comment in the chat box or a question. Uh, won't the doctor require that you have pulmonary functional test before prescribing either machine? Well, they do, and that's how they base um, their prescription on those. So they do that at clinic or sometimes they require one of us to go to the home and do it. Yeah. So, you know, when they get you to blow out real fast to get like this uh, cough peak flow, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for the numbers on how well your expiratory muscles are, are going. And when they're weakened uh, on both sides, you know, the inspiratory muscles or the expiratory muscles, then you'll need some different equipment to go with you. And that's why the cough assist device, the suction, and Monday's talk going over the home mechanical ventilator, the Trilogy uh, machine is what we'll look at. So we're looking at supporting all the ventilation because of weakening respiratory muscles over time with ALS. Uh, so that's the important thing of what we're trying to cover today and Absolutely. Monday. Absolutely. And just as a reminder, uh, I know there was a comment in the chat box. We are recording today's uh, presentation and demonstration and it will be sent to you and also available on our ALS Texas website with our other recorded events. We have another comment uh, and question. How does the suction machine schedule fit with the cough machine schedule? So um, I will say every time you do the therapy, you, when you're gonna start doing your cough assist therapy, you wanna have your suction machine by the side just because in case you have excessive saliva after you use, um, let's say the first set of five and you start noticing salivation, you wanna have it right there. Have a patient that after every couple of cycles, we have to use the, um, the suction machine. So always have her there on, on this side. I mean, sometimes you might not use it, but sometimes you're gonna use it a lot. So it all depends how, how your saliva is, um, is, how your saliva is being controlled by your body, basically. <clears throat> right, you don't have to wait and to cough out secretions or to suction secretions out after like, you know, a set of five. Anytime you have secretions that do come up after each exhalation, each cough that you want to try to get them out mm -hmm. and get everything out of the way by using either the suction catheter or by just um, coughing and spitting it out. That's, so that's what you want to do. Keep clearing the secretions. One more thing that I forgot to mention. Uh, a good seal is always important when um, doing the cough assist. If you have anything leaks, you're not gonna get that good therapy. So make sure, I know it seemed probably like I was suffocating Carlos, but I wasn't. As you can see, there's cushion right here and there's air blowing in. So good seal, you know, is going to help you get the ultimate therapy. If something is leaking from the bottom, from the top or from the sides, you'll know because you're gonna get air coming out or it's gonna make like a, like a bubbling, bubbling noise. So you don't want that. You want a firm, good seal, okay? Um, and your respiratory therapist uh, would show you what a good seal is. On top of that, a good seal also, let's say you do have a good seal technique, but all the sun starts leaking, it's probably because um, you need to clean your mask because if you know we have body oil in our face and then that's gonna get on the mask, it's gonna start hardening the mask. Um, so you're gonna lose seal with that said after every use, um, you should wash your mask with warm soapy water, okay? And then you can also rinse the tubing at least once a week. So I always tell my patients, pick a day, you know, it can be a Friday evening, Sunday morning, Saturday morning, to clean all your, all your um, gear for your therapy, at least once a week. But this mask after every use. So if you use it three times a day, you're gonna be washing this three times a day. Once a day, you're gonna be washing this once a day. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Are there any other questions or comments for Jordan, Carlos, Dr. Holt? Uh, we've got lots of kudos coming in, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Um, thank you again uh, from another participant. Um, I know that uh, this is something that's very, very important and valuable to our ALS Texas community and 
we very much appreciate it. Um, before we wrap up, I did want to share one, uh, one more thing um, for walk season. And I'll get, before we close, I'll make sure we don't have any more questions. But I did want to remind everyone that this is a walk season for ALS Texas. ALS does not stop and we don't either. Our walk is still happening this year. It just looks differently. If you have not yet formed a team, this is a perfect way for your family and friends and loved ones to stand up, look ALS square in the eye and fight back. So many times family members and friends want to help. They don't know how, and this is a way that they can do that. So let us know if you're interested in forming a team and have not. The walk um, can happen at any time. We will have a virtual event on October 31st, which is of course Halloween. So uh, costumes are encouraged. And we have many other events coming up. Please always check our ALSTexas.org uh, website for our virtual events. And as Dr. Holt mentioned, on Monday, RQS will be back again. We love these guys. They're so, so good to us and good to you and good for you. So on Monday, RQS will be back and they will be talking about the trilogy. And then on uh, the 31st of August, we will have our Stress Less on Purpose, self-care for both caregivers and those living with ALS. Those are just a couple of the events that we have coming up, so be sure and check our website. And Dr. Holt, I will let you wrap up. Oh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Tanya, Steve Morris, everyone with the ALS Association. We love you guys. 